Good morning, and welcome to worship this morning on the third Sunday of Advent. I do hope that you are having a blessed Advent season, so that even while the ongoing challenges of living in the time of COVID are still with us, that you are having time to reflect on the way that God's blessings are coming to you and this world, continually being revealed as we move closely to the time of Jesus' birth. Let us pause as we prepare for worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together. Stir, Stir up, up the, the wills, wills of your faithful, faithful people, people, Lord God, God and, and open our ears, ears to the words of your prophets, that anointed by your Spirit, we may testify to your light. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading this morning is from Isaiah, the 61st chapter. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations they shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as the garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, 
so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. The second reading is the Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, for we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses of the Negev. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. The Holy Gospel for this day is found in the first chapter of St. Luke. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For you, Lord, have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. You have come to the aid of your servant Israel to remember the promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. There is something quite special about singing together in worship. Over these last months, I have heard from a number of you, and other pastors report that they've had similar conversations, that one of the things that you miss, that we all miss the most during this time of COVID, is the ability to be together in this space and to sing together. There is something about lifting our voices in song, hearing our voices strengthened and carried by those around us that moves us deeply. Even those who profess to not being able to carry a tune in a bag will say that they delight in the sound of others singing around them. When earlier this fall, the church council discussed whether or not it made sense to open up for in-person worship. We discussed the need for social distancing and mask wearing. And then we also talked about the reality that there would be no singing. And even though the decision to remain with online worship was based primarily on health concerns and on practical considerations about our space and so on, It was the inability to sing together that I can remember believing was the straw that broke the camel's back. Not sing. How could we gather together for worship and not sing? What is it about 
singing that affects us so deeply. According to music psychologists, when we sing, serotonin levels are increased in our brains, and we experience an enhanced sense of well-being. Studies have also shown that when we sing together in a group, our oxytocin levels go up. And that is the hormone that gives us the feeling of being bonded, of being connected to each other. No surprise then that in challenging times, we want to sing together, to give voice to our our fears, to our despair, and yes, even to our hope. Those complicated experiences that it is often hard to put into words. Is it any wonder then that when Mary found out that she was pregnant with God's promise and God's hope for the world, the first thing she did. Was to run to her relative Elizabeth and to break into song. She gave voice to her fears and her hopes and her wonder at the new thing that God was going to do in and through her. Her trust that all appearances to the contrary. God was going to bring about the healing and the repair of the world. Can you imagine if Mary had only spoken her words? My soul proclaims your greatness, Lord. I sing my Savior's praise. It's not that those words are without power. We read them in our worship services, and they have the capacity to move us. But when we put those words to music, my soul proclaims your greatness, Lord. I sing my Savior's praise. That captures the whole of who we are. Our body, our mind, and our spirits are all deeply engaged, and are used to give voice to the complex and complicated realities in which we live and those things that we hope for. I don't know if you've ever thought of it this way before or not, but when we sing Mary's Magnificat, whether it's during a hymn in our worship service or in holden evening prayer on our Wednesday nights in Advent, we are joining with Mary across time and space. We are not only giving words to our fears and our despair, but also to the great hope and the trust that God is about to do something new in and through us. In some ways, we also join with all people. Across time and the globe, who've been inspired by Mary's Magnificat to give voice to their own challenging conditions, and give words to their hope and belief that there is a possibility of a new world where justice and peace are experienced by all. We as Christians profess. That we see in Jesus a unique expression of God's love and compassion, God's movement toward justice and peace in the world, and we profess 
that it is Christ's own spirit that continues to move and breathe in and through us in the world in a way that will uplift the lowly and bring the proud down so that we will all be able to experience the fullness of God's healing and repair of the world. As we get close to the longest night of the year, as the number of people who are ill with COVID increase, and the number of people who die because of its complications increase, and as we by necessity still do not meet together in this space to sing and praise God together. We do trust that the day is coming when God's promises will be revealed not only for us but for the whole world. And we can trust that the time is coming when we will be able to join together in this place to sing our praises and thanksgiving to God who makes all things new. Amen. My soul proclaims your greatness, Lord, I sing my Savior's praise. You looked upon my lowliness, and I am full of grace. Now every land and every age, this blessing shall proclaim. Great wonders you have done for me, and holy Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed that are found on your screen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for all of God's children, for all people who are in need. We give you thanks, most gracious and loving God, for our lives this day, which are a gift from your hand. We give you thanks for all of the ways that you provide for us throughout our days, with food enough to eat, with shelter, for communion, for community, that gathers around us even if by Zoom or at a distance. Even in these days that are challenging, oh God, you are at work in all things so that our lives might be full and that we might be well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray this day, O oh God of abundance, for all of your children across this globe who are in need this day, for people who still live in the midst of violence because of warring factions, for those fleeing gang violence, Wherever there is violence in our streets or in our homes, O oh God, we ask that you would bring healing and wholeness. May we be avenues by which your peace comes to this world, O oh God. And we ask that you use us and whatever gifts we have in ways beyond our imagining, so that your peace and your abundance might be experienced by all of your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks this day, O oh God, for all leaders who commit themselves to the care and well-being of your people for all of those who are working together hand in hand across the aisle so that those who are vulnerable might be cared for. Oh God, we ask that that kind of open hand and spirit might catch like fire and spread across all of our leaders, whether they be in Washington, D.C., or in our own state, or in our town. Might your spirit move through and use the gifts of all of your people so that your abundance might be experienced even in the midst of these challenging days. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh God of healing. We pray this day for all people who are ill, for those who are grieving, for those who are struggling in any way, especially those we now name aloud or silently in our hearts. We ask that your healing power move through all people who are in need, that you bring strength to those who are weak and comfort to those who are grieving. We give you thanks for all of the medical personnel, for scientists and researchers, all through whom you are bringing your healing power to this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O oh God, for this congregation new journey, 
And though we have been dispersed these months, for all of the ways you have allowed for us to connect with each other through these times, through the developments in technology, for the simple use of masks and social distancing, God, you have created us for each other. And we are ingenious at ways of being connected even when we must be physically apart. And so for this community and for the ways that this community supports each other and supports others, for your movement through all of that, oh God, we give you thanks. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. It is good this morning to greet you a second time and to say thank you for all of the ways that you support this congregation and its ministry, for your presence in whatever community you are living in, for the ways that you are the light and the healing of God in your daily life. Um, we are so grateful for that. Uh, we are also give thanks for the ways you continue to support the ministry of this congregation. Uh, just this past Sunday, numbers of you were here to pick up the ornaments for the, from the angel tree where we support two families at Christmas time. And those gifts will be coming back next Sunday and then will be taken to those families who um, are struggling this year. So for the ways that you are generous, uh, we just want to say thank you to you and, uh, and to let you know that we recognize your generosity, your open heart uh, in the midst of this time. Let us pray. God of all goodness, generations have turned to you, gathered around your table, and shared your abundant blessings. Number us among them, that as we gather these gifts from your abundance and give thanks for your rich blessings, we may feast upon your very self and care for all that you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our sovereign and servant. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus teaches. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with favor and give you and the whole world peace. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.